Afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us on a busy Penn State News Day. We appreciate it. Um, Coach, uh, if you want to just start talking about, you know, prep for Emerald Coast Classic, and then we'll open it up for questions. As always, when we're on Zoom, just hit the raise your hand button to ask a question. Uh, yeah, we were, you know, got back to work right, you know, right away today and um, chance for us to learn from last night, um, take things that'll be helpful and, and learn from them that'll help us in the next few games and things that won't help us just, you know, discard them and, and move on. Uh, so, you know, got just finished another good practice, you know, prepare again tomorrow, try and get better. And then, um, you know, we're going to play a, a good team. Like LSU is a good basketball team. So uh, we need to be really locked in mentally and physically um, to give ourselves a chance to win the game down there. So uh, I am open and ready for questions. We'll start with John Sauber. Hey, Mike, I asked you this a few months ago uh, and figured I'd circle back to it. We talked about how Matt Painter delegated you guys as sort of coordinators. How do you delegate the duties amongst your staff? Do you have sort of an offensive and defensive coordinator, so to speak? We haven't. <clears throat> uh, I haven't done it in that way yet with our group. And, you know, it, it's still a learning process for me and for these guys working together. So um, that's something in the future where we may split it and do some offensive and defensive coordinator kind of roles. The things that were helpful, like when I was at Purdue, um, you know, the first time I was there, I brought some concepts and ideas from Butler, uh, things that were new to Purdue. And then they kind of played off of those concepts and created an offense, uh, which they still run today. Uh, so me going back there was easy for him to put me into that role because I was already in it uh, and I knew it, it, which is different for these guys here on our staff. Uh, because they haven't worked with me before. So a lot of the concepts are still new to them. So we split our scouts up uh, between the three assistant coaches. Um, you know, they take kind of every other game and go through it in that way. And then I have help uh, from some different guys in different areas. So uh, I still handle a lot of our offense. Um, you know, Trey Wooded helps me with that because he's, He's the closest one to knowing what we want to do, you know, from his time with the main red claws running the same offense that we were doing in Boston. So he kind of gives me prep to get ready for games um, and helps in that way. And our assistants handled the defense um, getting, you know, with, with help from, you know, Mike Green and, and Bo Wagner and Grady Eifert and those guys putting in a lot of input to help those guys be prepared for each scout. Max Ralph. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm great, Max. <clears throat> so I, we've seen Giovanni a couple of times here with the team warming up and everything. Um, just wondering if you have an update on kind of the situation with him and how close he is to fully rejoining you guys. You know what? With, with Giovanni, sorry, I'm throwing trash away. Uh, with Giovanni, um, the, the one thing that, you know, he, he's back with us practicing, which is great. Uh, but he also missed a month of practice. And there were a lot of things that we put in, a lot of things that we're doing, a lot of things that are brand new, which are still new to him. And, uh, you know, I want to be fair to him that I, I want to put him in position to have success. I don't want to put him in position to fail. Uh, so he still needs to get up to speed with what we're doing. So he's doing a good job. He's getting a lot of reps in practice. I know that because, you know, him coming back and being able to practice has allowed John to get more reps off in practice, right? John and Jelani can split some reps now and Giovanni takes all the other ones. So he's getting up to speed a little bit quicker and uh, they're, you know, hopefully sometime soon we can use him. No, uh, because, you know, he, he can help us and he's somebody that, you know, we'd love to have out there and love to help us. But like I said, I want to put him in position to have success. That's the most important thing for me right now. Jonathan Drager. 
Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Great. All right, so looking at the LSU roster, your next opponent, it seems that they have been towering over your players with a seven-foot center. Uh, how do you plan to counter, counter that center position? You know what? It's I don't know if it's been um, – I, mean, I think everybody will tower over us. Like it's a, it's a matter of you know, sheer force and will, more than size, right? It's, I don't. What's the old saying? It's the, I don't even know it. But the the dog. What's the size of the dog in the fight? But the size of the fight in the dog, like that's who we need to be. And I say it all the time. Like gritty, not pretty. Doesn't matter how it looks. Doesn't matter how tall somebody is, like, you know, chop them down bit by bit. And that's what, you know, that's what we need to do. Like if if there's a seven foot guy out there and, and we got a five foot nine guy guarding him, we have to get it done. And, you know, my question for you, Jonathan, is how do you eat an elephant? Do you know? Do you know that? Do you know that answer? I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the answer. <laughs> One bite at a time. Spencer Riptick. Hey coach, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, obviously the, the offense had a ton of ex success yesterday. How do you carry that into this weekend with big name teams coming up? Uh, we just have to play the same way. Like we, we have to, and that's something that we talked about you know, today even, um, you know, in our film session was continuing to move the ball, continuing to swing the ball from side to side um, and keep, you know, keep people off balance with our movement. And um, that's what we want to continue to do. We're going to take whatever the defense gives us. Uh, but by moving the ball quickly from side to side, we put people in kind of disadvantaged situations. And um, that's what we want to continue to do. LSU is is going to be a team that's going to switch every single screen, right? They're going to make it. They want to force you to be stagnant. They want to force you to stand and kind of look at them, be set in their defense. And if we allow, if we're stagnant offensively, like it's going to be hard to score on them. Like they're a really good defensive team. They're a really active team. They turn people over. They block shots at the rim. Um, and if we play into their hands, it's not going to be good for the Nittany Lions. So, we need to move the ball. We need to create open shots for ourselves. And then, you know, knock on wood, we make those shots. Austin Grot. Hey, Coach. Uh, congrats on the win yesterday. My question for you is, looking at the defensive side of the ball for your team this year, you held Cornell to 74 points, their lowest in the season. They averaged 87 coming to the game. And on the entire season, you're holding teams to 68 points per game. So coming into Penn State, when you were teaching defense, what was more important, attitude or technique? I think our technique has to be great um, in terms of how we play, how we're going to do things, um, our positioning in terms of where we are. We needed to be a more disciplined group. And those were conversations I had right away when I got here. And for us to win in the Big Ten, we need to play a Big Ten style of defense, you know, the, the defense that is conducive to winning in the Big Ten. And we're trying to do that. We're trying to get there. We're not there yet. We're not perfect. I think, you know, I talked about it a couple of games ago. We were three, let me get my numbers messed up. We were 325 and giving up three point, uh, three point percentage defense. Then we moved up to 307. And I think after last night, we moved up. And I looked at this late at night. So, you know, I'm sorry if I give you the wrong number, but we're like 287 or 267, something in there. My numbers run together when it gets past midnight. Um, but that's where we are. Like, we're still not 100% uh, disciplined in what we need to do, but we're getting better. We need to get better every single game. And, you know, I was proud of our effort last night, and I thought we could have, you know, held them. We box out better. We probably keep them under um, closer to that 60-point number that we want to hold teams to. Madison Miller. Hi, Coach. So my question for you is you talk a lot about how, what it means to connect together as a team. So how does the team bonding and connecting together, how is this important coming into your trip over holiday break? What are you looking to get out of it? 
I think if if they get more time away from me, it's probably better for them. <laughs> you know, they're they're around each other a lot, and uh, you know, we have older guys. They've bonded, you know, just through sheer experiences, shared experiences of being through college together. You know, four years of college anywhere it's not the same for everybody at whatever school you're at but you have some of the similar and shared experiences now they're kind of giving those to each other and they enjoy being around each other Um, but then having great leaders um, you know John's been an awesome leader for us and he does things to get guys together he does things to help our team bond Uh, so that part's fun and now we get a chance to like focus on basketball for a little bit, right? We get this week off of school and we get a chance to go test ourselves um, and and see what we're going to look like and see, you know, who we are. Um, Because, you know, that's what you, that's what you kind of, as a college player, that's what you want to do. You want to get in these events and really test yourselves. And that's who we get to be. And, you know, I told them at the end of practice, hey, we're still that team that got beat by UMass. Like, that's us. We can also be the same team that, you know, beats one of these guys down here, right? With a, they're, they're both us. You know, it's a matter of which which team we want to be. John Sauber. Micah, how have you seen Jalen Pickett come along so far? Uh, it seems like he's had the ball in his hands more of late. Is that sort of the plan moving forward with him? John, I, I asked him after the St. Francis game, just you know, like, how can I help you be better? Right. And I think, you know, if you go back and look at his film from early on when he was at Siena, um, he had the ball in his hands a lot. Right. So we needed to get his usage a little bit higher. And I think, you know, he needs to demand more of himself also um, of, like getting the ball in his hands and then making things happen. I think we were a little better last night in getting organized when they were pressing us full court. And that's something that I think helps him. Like the more organized we play, the better he is, but guys are looking to get him the ball in different situations. And, you know, he and Sam are still learning to play off of each other in, in that way. So I think he's going to continuously get better. He had some open looks that, you know, still didn't fall that, I, you know, were in and out a couple of different times. So, you know, he's going to find his rhythm. He's going to find his way. Um, us putting him in position to make plays, you know, having six assists last night was a positive. You know, that's who he is. He's a guy that that finds – he finds people. He, he makes them better. And I think he'll make us better the more comfortable he gets. Max Ralph. He got starting minutes last night, but, um, you know, it seems like Miles has kind of been the first guy you've gone to off the bench when you're unhappy with what you've seen on the floor. Um, Hasn't contributed as much offensively as he has in the past few years, but what have you seen from him overall so far this season? You know, I I think just his experience um, offensively and defensively, what he kind of, you know, he's he's been through the rigors of the Big Ten. Uh, So he's the guy that you can kind of count on you know that he's going to do his job in tough moments. And, you know, he was, he was injured, right? So he missed some time and um, it's going to take him a little time to get back to like who he is, but he can still be productive in what he does. Uh, So, you know, I, I challenge him every single day to be better, like be better defensively, uh, do more things offensively uh, within yourself and what you can do. So, You'll see him start knocking down some of those shots and some of his trademark big shots, um, which, you know, he made one last night that kind of, you know, opened the doors for us and gave us a little breathing room. So, you know, I think the more he plays, the the more comfortable he starts to get, and uh, you know, the better he's going to be. He missed, like I said, he missed a lot of time. Like, and then, you know, unfortunately, when he didn't get a chance to work his way kind of back into, into, uh, work the rust off, you know, because Greg Lee was injured right after that. So, you know, Miles got thrown to the fire right away. Um, and, and he's got to play himself like where the other guys are, uh, but he'll get there. 
We'll do two more questions first with Dave Melandra, and then we'll end with Spencer Ripton. Hey, Coach, got a two part question for you. One, what has impressed you most about your team so far through three games? And secondly, when you first look at LSU, what are some of the challenges that they will present to you? Dave, I'm going to answer this in by asking you a two part question. You said through three games. Does that mean I only get to talk about the three wins? Because if I could throw out that UMass game, I'd be a happy man right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited about like the growth of our team. Like every single day, we we come in and try and get better, and we work to get better. And that's you know, you see that, and I think hopefully, you know, from the outside, you can see the progress that we've made. And, it, and there's still a long way to go, uh, but we're trying and we're trying to get better. And, you know, the schedule hasn't helped us in terms of how we've played the teams we've played and the styles that they play, like not one of them has been the same. So like how we guarded last night, like I didn't even watch the defensive side of the ball because we're never going to guard like that again. Like nobody else is playing the Princeton offense that we played this season. So like, it doesn't help us. Like our effort in transition, our rebounding, those things could help us, but nothing else. So uh, being able to learn from film, being able to learn from practice, that's what I'm most excited about with this group. Um, LSU is like LSU is a challenge just in terms of like they are a um, big, long, aggressive team, right? And you know, the, I told our guys, number one, like, you want to beat LSU. That was question number one. It was like, here's how you do it, A, B, C. Now, let's go out and focus on those things to help us beat LSU. That should be the only things on our mind as we pack and go on this trip. It's like, what do I need to do to beat LSU? And, you know, hopefully they're doing that. Hopefully they're packing. Hopefully they're packing their hard hats because we're going to need them. Last question is Spencer. Um, hey, Coach. Um, yesterday you got some of the younger players involved. Do you think you'll continue to do that even with some tougher competition coming up? Yeah, that's, you know, that's my goal every game. And, uh, you know, I want to find more time for Dalian. And, you know, even Caleb. Like Caleb, you know, has been a little behind with his development in terms of, you know, being, being healthy. Uh, but – like we, you got to find opportunities for Dalian, but those guys got to make their opportunities, right? Like we practice every day. Like they have to force me to play them by how they practice. And, you know, for a young guy, those are the challenges that you kind of run into is, you know, you have older guys in front of you and who older guys who don't always want to come off the court and practice. Like, how do you get out there? How do you be productive? in what you do in practice. And I think that's the biggest thing. And then like find them minutes when you can, because you, there's going to be a game that Dallian's going to help us win. All right. Like it's going to happen at some point in time. Uh, so we need to find the minutes each game and help him grow as a player. So he's comfortable when that time comes. So that's what we're going to try and do um, each and every, each and every game. I, I wanted to play him more, but you know, the situation didn't quite dictate it yesterday. Some of the older guys were playing well. Uh, so his his kind of opportunity was limited. But, you know, we're going to try every game to give, give those younger guys an opportunity. Great. Thank you, Coach.